Right, so as Starmer's Labour insists there is no money left to spend on anything, the Tories have wasted it all, ignoring the millions pouring into the coffers of big business, instead uh, inviting them to breakfast with them, to share all the money they haven't got with their Labour Party rather than with the country. And But undermining that argument entirely, it's the small matter of British gas parent company Centrica posting its half-yearly profits, which have come in at an eye-watering £2.1 billion. Pounds. For context, that's a 1,000% increase on what it made for the whole of last year. They have made in six months what the average worker would take 32,000 years to earn. Meanwhile, of course, 8.8 million people in this country are still living in fuel poverty, so how is this fair? Well, I've covered the argument to renationalise gas and electric before on the basis we get screwed by the system in place. Most of the biggest energy suppliers are also energy producers and distributors. This is why they survived. When so many sole suppliers collapsed when the energy market toppled, others survived because the vast majority of their profits are made in production and distribution. And crucially to them and their profiteering, the energy watchdog Ofgem has no role to play and no oversight whatsoever in production and distribution, only in supply. It is the energy supply watchdog, strictly speaking. Calling it the energy watchdog is too broad a term. And yet they have a direct role to play in these profits because at least half of this eye-watering amount of cash is down to their decision making and why Ofgem clearly is completely unfit for purpose as if we needed reminding but this really does underline it some 500 million pounds of the profits British Gas recorded are as a direct result of Ofgem raising the price cap allowing energy supply which generally has quite tight profit margins to profiteer much more heavily the cost of wholesale gas, for example, had gone up. We know it went up. But because many of these energy suppliers, as I said, are also producers and distributors, the cost to themselves won't really have budged. As such, their profit margins across the board rose. So if they were already making record profits, how did they convince Ofgem they needed the price cap to go up? It all comes down to the actual cost of wholesale gas, not really having anything to do with Ofgem. They only deal with supply, as I said. Wholesale gas prices will be posted, but to a cynic like myself, if an energy company is producing its own supply, is it necessarily paying those wholesale prices to itself? Aside from that, Ofgem can only go by the generic published wholesale price. And because the supply and profit margins are already tight, any proposed hike in wholesale prices that would lead to energy companies making a loss at supply end, well, Ofgem had to step in to ensure they could still profit at supply end, even if it meant we couldn't afford our actual bills anymore. The regulator that is supposed to protect us from excess profiteering was incapable within its remit to do so, ending up siding with the energy companies and not us. Well, who could afford to take the hit more, us or these massive energy companies? Now, the other side to this is you have to realise Ofgem is actually a branch of government. Some viewers will have heard me talk about non-ministerial government departments before. Parts of government run by civil servants instead of with ministerial oversight, with ultimate responsibility for them held by the cabinet office. So functionally, they will end up doing what the government instruct or operate in line with government policy. And when that is to continue selling privatisation as some kind of huge success rather than the source of all financial misery in this country when it comes to paying our bills, Instead of demanding the energy companies take a loss, the managing money tree got shaken by the Tories, the public purse was prized open again, and more money was handed to these companies, along with the price cap getting raised, to keep them in profit, to offset our bills as well somewhat, in the form of top-ups to varying degrees, depending on our incomes. It was an individual thing. All of this has contributed to their financial gain, our poverty, their profits. It's utterly sick and twisted, but no more than so than the insistence from both the government and Starmer's Labour to say, we won't tax them more. Basically telling the companies that own our energy infrastructure that we're here to be exploited and telling us to suck it up. Oh, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. We can't have more money because there's no more money left. And besides, it's our greed, apparently our greed, driving inflation. So stop asking for more. You're just making inflation worse. So saith the Bank of England, and neither the Tories or Labour will question that either, in case they undermine the bank's independence, another excuse to hide behind. Independence to demand we say stay poor, that would be. Off Jem's excuse, oh, these big profits are just a one-off. That isn't the point. You let them make that money out of us at a time when we could least afford it, when we needed an energy watchdog on our side. You chose theirs. Off Jem isn't just unfit for purpose, it is insultingly unfit. 
What are Centrica proposing they do with these massive profits? He's one off, one off or not, besides the point. What are they going to do with the money? 33% increase in dividend payouts to shareholders and extended share buyback. Not a word of mention of investment, which is what privatization was sold to us all as doing. And as for a rebate to the customers, they've scalped. Well, don't be so bloody silly. Oh, and let's not forget British gas boss Chris O'Shea is getting a £1.6 million bonus. Good for him. All these companies are focused on is making profit, not delivering effective, modern, up-to-date services, but profit for themselves. So instead of investment, they'll always cut corners. Where they can pull a fast one, they will. Where they can get out of taxation, they will. And we keep electing governments that enable it all. The case for renationalisation will not go away. It will only get louder because this exploitation of British people has to end. The cost of living crisis was never about the cost of living. It has always been a cost of greed crisis. Whilst we get told we can't have higher incomes to cover these costs during this cost of living crisis or cost of greed crisis, because that would make us greedy, apparently. And our greed is driving inflation. Higher wages, higher incomes is the driver, they claim at the Bank of England, despite none of us actually getting them. And you'd have to be a fool to believe that. It's corporate profiteering, corporate greed that is actually the driver of inflation. The literal answer to getting inflation down and freeing up money for the government to print and spend again is taxation. Tax the profits, a windfall tax on this obscenity, but they won't do it. Meanwhile, whilst the Tories laugh and congratulate Centric on a job well done, scalping us all, Starmer's Labour, the kids' starver party, is looking at the almost twice as big profits made by Lloyd's banking group and saying they can't see the justification in taxing them either. But if they can't see the point of that, they don't get economics and they belong nowhere near power. But they clearly won't see the point of taxing energy corporations either. Once they pledge to renationalise all of this, now they'll look at Centrica and wonder if there's any potential party donors there instead. Perhaps they can sell them the opportunity to make Labour policy since it now seems to be up for sale to the highest bidder. Sunak wants to halve inflation by the time the year is out, he said. It's one of his five missions. If he fails, he can only blame himself because a windfall tax here would go a long way towards achieving it. Ideology dictates he'd probably rather fail, though. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please do like, share and subscribe if you did. New content out every day. Meanwhile, here's another video you might find interesting if you like this one. We're just as we thought we were coming out of energy bill misery. Sunak's found another way to inflict even more of it on us. The swine. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.